In today's video, we are going to look at how you can improve the accuracy of your survey control while saving you money and time and increasing the confidence of your control networks. We're going to dive into six total station traverse data sets. Every data set used the exact same observations, but the difference is in how I post-processed those observations and which observations I didn't use for certain data sets. I did a head-to-head -head comparison of traditional adjustment methods such as the compass, transit, and Cranville rule adjustments with the more rigorous adjustment method, a least squares adjustment. Least squares adjusts the total station observations themselves instead of the final coordinates. It does this by estimating the quality of the observations and giving the better quality observations more weighting when determining the final coordinate. There are quite a few advantages of using a least squares adjustment, and as you take more and more redundant observations and build up the geometry of your control network, the improvements become more and more evident. I was actually quite surprised at the final results, and if you're using survey control or are concerned about 3D scanning accuracy, you'll want to watch until the end. The first data set will be an unadjusted traverse. For all intents and purposes, it will be an open traverse, as even though the starting station of the traverse was observed at the end of the traverse, nothing was done in post-processing to close it. The next three data sets are traditional closed traverses that were adjusted via the compass, transit, and Cranwell rule adjustments, which have been around for many years and were the standard practice of adjusting traverse information for quite some time. They all produce fairly similar results and are centered around the principle of applying an adjustment to close the start and endpoint of the traverse onto each other by proportionally adjusting each traverse leg based on its relative length. This approach does an acceptable job of adjusting systematic error of a traverse, but basically completely ignores the random error that's circulating in the interior of the traverse. The fifth data set will use the same observations from the first four data sets, but will be processed using microsurveys StarNet one of the oldest and most trusted least squares adjustment applications out there. The last data set will use the same traverse observations as the previous five, but this time there will be additional observations to common points at every setup. This data set will also be processed in StarNet. The idea here being that the common point observations will create a closed triangle of observations for every single traverse leg. To assess the quality of the six data set, we will compare them in two different ways. The first First of which we will compare the coordinates of the seven main traverse hubs derived from each data set to values that we will hold as true. For every data set in StarNet, I held our starting point 13,002 and the initial backsite to 13,003 as fixed. Likewise for the traverse, it was run by starting at 13,002 and backsiting 13,003. For the values I'm holding as true, Unfortunately, I don't have access to an errorless control network, and to that point, such a thing does not exist, as we know it is impossible to make any kind of measurement without introducing some degree of error. The next best thing I could do was to make a control network with enough redundant observations and geometry within reason to hold it as our true coordinate values. I did this by running numerous rounds of total station observations and common point ties to create many closed triangles in the network to precisely define the horizontal coordinates. I then ran a closed level loop through the network to the main traverse hubs and common points. This level loop closed out to a thousandth of a foot and the worst redundant differential leveling side shot observation I saw at the same point was two thousandths of a foot. The final standard deviations of the held control network's coordinates were around four thousandths or better horizontally and three thousandths or better vertically. I kept seeing vertical residuals on a few hubs which were worse than I expected. When I went back out to the site, I noticed that some of the nails were tilted and as a result, the leveling data was showing elevations that were higher than that of the total station because the level rod sat on top of the edge 
edge of the nail, whereas the coal sat down lower inside the dimple of the mag nail. I wanted to point this out for two reasons. The fully adjusted Starnet network was precise enough to be able to alert me of this slight difference in elevation and to put things in perspective. When we're talking about accuracy that is tight, in the real world, even the slightest piece of debris or tilted hub can throw you out. When we used redundant observations with proper field equipment and techniques, I believe there are few situations when real world elevations cannot be provided to an accuracy exceeding what is actually usable. Was the differential leveling providing elevations that were more accurate? Technically, yes. But if you were to set up a paddle point for terrestrial scanning on that point that was going to sit in the dimple, the total station provided an elevation that would be more accurate in that situation. For the second method of assessing the data set's accuracy, I will be looking at check shots that were observed from each hub and comparing their values to the coordinates of those same points shot in from another hub. For example, we will look at the coordinates of point 100 that was shot in from Traverse on 13,000, 13,001, 13,002, etc. If a traverse network is carrying more air, we can expect that air to show up when looking at the coordinates of the same physical point when shot in from different spots in that traverse. If the network was airless, we would expect the common points to deviate only by the air introduced from the side shot observation and nothing more. Like previously stated, this is basically just an open traverse. The final leg closed to within 33 thousandths of a foot horizontally, which gave us a closure ratio of 1 to 36 thousand. Not bad, but not great. But I really want to stress that this closure ratio is not a good way of assessing accuracy for the reasons mentioned earlier. It is completely ignoring what is going on in the interior of the traverse. You can have a bunch of random hair throughout the network and get lucky on your closure shot and end up relatively close to where you started. When looking at the coordinates of the traverse hubs, the unadjusted traverse network had an average horizontal error of 27 thousandths of a foot with a maximum horizontal error of 46 thousandths of a foot and an average vertical error of 3 thousandths in a max of 7 thousandths compared to the held network. The horizontal error didn't surprise me too much, although I must admit I was quite surprised how small the vertical error was. I had a feeling it would be better than the horizontal error, as there is no reason to believe the error would have been compounded and should have remained random in nature, given that the field surveying techniques used should have removed all systematic error. I should note I did take extra care to retain vertical accuracy by using a fixed height rod instead of measuring each keys to the side of a prism on a tri-rack, and the HIs were measured very carefully to the nearest millimeter, allowing for a higher degree of precision versus using an imperial measuring tape graduated in tenths. The check shots from the unadjusted data set had an average horizontal error of 48 thou with a max of 99 thou. There was an average vertical error of 6 thou and a max of 12 thou. The magnitude of the large horizontal error to check shot 105 did surprise me somewhat, but it really highlights the discrepancy seen from shooting the same point from the start versus the end of an unadjusted traverse. As expected, this data set was the least accurate. However, the Compass, Crandall, and Transit all struggled with this check shot as well. They all had discrepancies ranging from 60 to 70 thousandths. In contrast, the least squares with common point adjusted observations to this point had a discrepancy of only 14 thousandths. If nothing else is taken from this video, again, please remember this. Your traverse closure alone does not provide a good indicator of accuracy. We had a traverse closure of 33 foul on this data set, and we are seeing check shot discrepancies closing in on a tenth of a foot. The Compass, Transit, and Crandall rule adjustments all provided fairly similar results to each other with average horizontal errors of the main traverse hubs ranging from 30 to 33 thou and max horizontal errors ranging from 46 to 55 thou. Since these adjustments do not alter elevations, there is no change there. There were notable changes in specific traverse hub coordinates but the average deviations did not significantly change. The same was observed about the check shot deviations. These adjustments did provide an improvement over the unadjusted traverse with an average horizontal error of around 35,000 
versus the unadjusted traverse at 48 thou on the check shots. But since these methods all adjust the traverse based only on the closure of the traverse and distribute that error without any regard to the quality of the individual measurements and did not make use of any common ties, there are few situations where they would produce results as good as a least squares adjustment. I was a bit surprised on this one as well. The least squares adjusted traverse without common ties for the main traverse hubs produced an average horizontal error of 3 thou with a max of 10 thou. It produced a slight improvement on vertical accuracy with an average error of 3 thou with a max error of 6 thou. For the check shots we saw another significant improvement with an average horizontal error of 24 thou and a max of 35 thou. And it produced an average vertical error of 5 thou with a max of 13 thou. The vertical error was not significantly improved on the check shots because the vertical error was already so small for the previous board data sets and the vast majority of the error observed to the check shots would be introduced from the side shots themselves and since there is no common point observations in this data set there wasn't any additional ties to help correct the observations to the check shots. The horizontal error was improved because the least squares adjustment took into account not only the foresight observations but also the backside observations. Essentially doubling the number of observations used in determining the coordinates of the network. The least squares adjustment with common ties for the main traverse hubs produced an average horizontal error of 8 thou with a max of 17 thou. It produced a slight improvement on vertical error with an average error of 4 thou and a max error of 7 thou. I think that the reason there was a small increase in the horizontal error of the main traverse hubs in this data set was due to the fact that the side shots to the common points that were used in the adjustment were phase one, phase two only, whereas every other observation in the non-common point traverse adjustment that played a role in the coordinates of the traverse hubs used multiple rounds of observations to the foresight and backsight. At the time, I chose to only use phase one, phase two observations to my side shots because I wanted to keep the time of collection for the traditional traverse and the common point traverse as close to possible. Possible. That being said, I think the less accurate side shots carried some of their air into the adjustment for the main traverse hubs. But let's keep this in perspective. We're talking a few thousands here, and if we were to run this project a few different times, I believe that without these common points tying the network together, the random error would show up more. The check shots for the common points traverse being significantly more accurate is proof of this. For the check shots, we saw another significant improvement with an average horizontal error of 50 thou and a max of 27 thou, and it produced an average vertical error of 3 thou with a max error of 7 thou. The common point observations cleaned up the vertical check shot errors quite a bit for the reason I mentioned earlier. It made use of the common point observations to help adjust the observations to the check shots. It also significantly improved the error horizontally. I was a bit surprised by the outline max horizontal error of 27 thou, but after looking at that particular observation closer, I realized it was taken to a point that was most likely affected by shooting through the vegetation as it was an outlier from everything else I saw in the check shots. As a final redundant check, I compared each of the datasets individual check shots not to each other, but with the help values of that point from the control network, the common point traverse had an average error of 12 thou horizontally and 4 thou vertically. The compass rule adjusted traverse had an average error of 28 thou horizontally and 4 thou vertically, and the unadjusted traverse had a horizontal error of 32 thou and 4 thou vertically. The results speak for themselves. Using least squares to process your total station observations provides a significant increase in accuracy and this is especially true when increasing your redundant common point observations. It saves field time by significantly removing the chance you'll have to go back to site if you run into some shots that contain blunders and office time by quickly and efficiently processing your field observations and makes finding outliers and blunders very quick and easy. It allows you to get near differential leveling accuracy without having to run through your control network with a level. And it saves you money by allowing you to get the same quality results with a much cheaper 
cheaper instrument. When I ran the control network through Starnet's pre-analysis program, I was able to confirm that on this site, I would be able to expect a higher level of accuracy from a five second instrument with common point types versus a one second instrument running a compass rule adjustment. My channel is typically focused on 3D scanning, photogrammetry, and reality capture as a whole. So how does this information apply to that world? As LiDAR units get better and better, the need to accurately place them and tie scans together becomes more and more important. If we're using a terrestrial scanner that is good to within 100, and to make full use of that accuracy, we cannot be setting the control it will rely on with RTK GPS or sloppy total station work. It can't be confident to within a 10. We need to learn how to use a total station and how to use it well. There are really no new groundbreaking revelations here. Using least squares has been widely accepted as the optimal method of adjusting survey data for many years now. That being said, as time goes on, in my experience, I've noticed the percentage of people in the industry that have gone to university for geomatics or surveying has started to dwindle. And because of this, I think many may not have a full understanding of how least squares works, how to properly use it, and what the benefits of it are. As a result of this, I think some surveying firms have relied on adjustment methods they are more familiar with. This will be my first video in a series of videos that will go over how to properly use Starnet to process your survey data and tips and tricks on setting survey control in general. Subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.